There's one thing that we all have in common. We all have or had a mom. Some of us maybe lost a mom, but this year, join the Growing Deer team and celebrate Mother's Day. Find that special person that helps take care of you, that loves you, that prays for you, and do something special for them. This year, appreciate someone on Mother's Day. This year during the opening week of Missouri's turkey season, Daniel and I had a great time hunting and actually tagging a couple of Ozark Mountain Toms. As we rolled into the second week, my good friend Scott Reynolds came to the Proving Grounds to join us for a turkey hunt. That was, that was the most exciting hunt I've ever been on. <laughs> it's hard to imagine, but Scott and I met decades ago when we were both programmers for Southwestern Bell computer programmers. We wrote code in the COBOL computer language. And when we met, and from then on for 32 years, we've been turkey hunting every spring together. Sometimes just for a day or a couple hours due to schedules or sickness, but every year we've kept our record and we're always happy as long as we get to get together and enjoy creation. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Reconix, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Blood Sport Arrows, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Caldwell Shooting Supplies, Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non Typical Clothing, House Lubricator, RTP Outdoors, Yamaha, Fourth Arrow, Scent Crusher, iScope, Mossy Oak Properties of the Heartland, Hunters Blend Coffee, Code Blue, Decode, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. The afternoon before Scott arrived, I checked a trail camera at a food plot we call Prickly Pear. I tagged a Tom there the previous week and was pleasantly surprised that Toms were still hanging in the area. With this MRI, most recent information, it was an easy decision of where to take Scott the next morning. Once we got settled in and not long after sunrise, we heard two toms just to the south. It was the start of a great day. Here's two. Yeah. Well, today is Monday, April 23rd, the first day of the second week of Missouri season. Got Grant right behind me. He's done some most recent information. There's been some turkeys work in this field for the last two or three days. Just came off of a rainy Monday here in Missouri. Drove through rain all day yesterday, coming from southeast Missouri. And we've been hunting 30, two years. 32 years together. Sometimes just maybe just a few hours, but because of work schedules and whatnot, but always a blessing to come down and see my friend and, and get out and enjoy creation. And we've been here in a couple cobble right now. One's probably 100, 150 yards from us right now. So we'll see what happens. It seemed like the toms got quiet once they hit the ground, but it wasn't long till we spotted a hen entering the food plot. It wasn't long till two toms followed the hen. These toms put on a show. One was obviously dominant, strutted a lot, gobbled a lot. The other one kind of hung on the periphery just a bit. putting on the show, but they were hung up at 100 plus yards from the blind. Even with a decoy, sometimes it can be tough to call a tom away from a hen.
During Missouri's turkey season, it closes daily at 1 p.m. So we walk back to the truck and strategize about our plan for the next day. That afternoon, one of our current interns, Tyler, checked a camera on a plot we call Big Boom. As we reviewed that card, we were smiling because of Tom had been in the plot the past two mornings. This plot's already been a great hunting location for us this spring. <laughs> Get your football workout in. <laughs> Chase Hersey tagged a big Tom out of this plot during new season on a snowy, cold morning. And a few days before Scott arrived, Daniel tagged a good Tom a couple hundred yards away in the timber. Putting all the information from the hunters and trail cameras together, it seemed that Tom was likely to roost to the north of the plot, hit the ground, circle around into the plot, maybe assemble some hens, and then head east toward an area we'd recently burned. Early the next morning, Scott, Tyler, and I headed to Big Boom Plot. This wasn't the first time Scott and I have hunted Big Boom. During the first season we aired growing deer, Scott filmed me tagging a tom with a bow in the same plot. Woohoo! Check that out, Scottus. I tell you, they came out of nowhere. I heard them. I'm so excited I can barely carry the thing. We hoped that we could make another great memory that morning. The three of us quietly got in the ghillie blind well before sunrise. It was exciting listening to that Tom gobble. He was only a few hundred yards away. I could also hear another Tom gobbling on a distant ridge. We could hear the Tom and knew he was in the food plot by the direction, but he was over the rise and we couldn't see him. I gave a few very soft calls with the intention of pulling the Tom over the rise. Wouldn't you know it, suddenly I spotted a few hens feeding into the plot from the right. natural behavior for a tom, especially this time during the breeding season, is get to a strut area, gobble, and the hens come to him. Normally strut areas are in openings so he can see predators or danger coming in. So the natural pattern was for the hens to go over the rise and to the tom. It seemed like that's what the hens were going to do. Once again, I made a few soft calls with hopes the hens would come to our decoy and stay in our area. 
The hen seemed to be staying on our side of the rise and suddenly, a beautiful sight, we saw the tip of a fan. just barely visible over the rise, backlit by the sun. It was a gorgeous sight. For many hunters, this is what I call the torn emotion minute. You want to enjoy it forever. You want to see that tom strutting and floating out there. But on the other hand, you want them to hurry up and get in shotgun range. At this point, we're all bouncing about an inch off our chairs. The hens are headed our way. The tom's in full view, backlit by the morning sun. It is a stunning sight. Tom slowly pushed the hens closer to our setup. What is it, man? Holy smokes, <laughs> buddy. <sighs> you okay? That was that was just one, that was the most exciting hunt I've ever been on. <sighs> you were nervous when he was out there at seventy. Oh. Then when he got to sixty, I can only tell you were nervous because my leg was up against yours. Then when you got to 50, your legs started moving. <laughs> 32 years, buddy. And I don't think it's ever been as good as this one. That was a fine hunt right there. That was a fine hunt. The field pie, if you'd had to hold your gun oh. up all that time, you'd been shaking like a persimmon in a windstorm. There, well, it would have been rubber arms, so I would have just fallen. <laughs> Man, that sun behind that fan was beautiful, oh, wasn't it? Oh my gosh, you, you just almost got lost just watching him just come back and forth and strutting and drumming and just kind of pushing the hens here. And, and I was I was down on him all the time and just watching the sun through his fan. And, oh my gosh. I mean, we probably could have milked a little more, but at 40, I knew that pattern was big enough because I could sense you were a little bit nervous, <laughs> baby. And I wanted that pattern a little bit bigger than 30. 30 is kind of tight. I kept asking Grant, what is he? He's 70, 77, 75, and I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, come on. What, what'd you do to get his head up? He yelped with my mouth. Oh, That's okay. What, probably sound like someone over here getting strangled. <laughs> I, I thought you were doing that. Oh, I can't even think of what Dan would do. 
he, he snorted at that turkey guard. Man, man, he bleated at it. He bleated at it. He bleated at it. He was like, man, don't bleed. And I thought that's what you did. This morning was just an absolute picture perfect hunt. I was fortunate enough to, to get a nice shot and the Winchester put it down and just thankful to be in, in God's creation with my buddy Grant and Tyler doing the filming. <laughs> but it's been a beautiful day. I mean, the sun's in the background, turkeys are, are gobbling a few ridges over and it's just been a, a blessing to come down and, and get the get to hunt again. What a thrilling hunt for a couple of friends to share. Scott and I celebrated and talked about it on and off camera and we decided it was one of the best turkey hunts we'd shared in 32 years. Congratulations to Scott on tagging a fine Ozark Mountain Tom and thanks for the friendship. <laughs>
man, they're looking good now. And I can't wait to see the antler development that resulted from these food plots. In this food plot, we had a hot zone electric fence protecting these beans in this little section we see here. And outside was open to regular browse. And you can see a tremendous difference. Almost no bean stalks outside. Beans got, you know, four or five feet tall inside where the fence was. We protected those beans throughout the growing season, let them make a full complement of pods, and then took the fence down during the late season when it was cold and deer wanted to feed here. You may recall I had a great encounter with the buck we call Herman. He'd already shed one side, so I passed him and I'll chase him again this coming year. There's more to the story than creating a great hunting location. It's great habitat management and soil management also. Late in the season, after the leaves have fell off or starting to fall off the beans and the pods are maturing, we broadcast our winter blend right into the standing beans. The deer foraged on the pods, there's none left, and the winter greens are coming up, providing more food and protecting the soil from wind and rain erosion. The forage growing now, well, it's providing food, but it is getting a little rank. It'll get big, we'll terminate that, and that will slow release, provide nutrients for the beans we're planting here in about a month, and mulch to keep the weeds down. So we're set to go with the same rotation. We're planting beans again this summer, probably put the hot zone right back here to protect them, have the rest of the food plot for summer feeding, allow this section to make pods for winter hunting. Every year we're taking notes and thinking it through and trying to refine our techniques and our goal is to share these techniques with you. If you would like to know about our most recent techniques and what we're seeing in the field, simply subscribe to the Growing Deer channel. As the temperatures warm up, I hope you don't get too busy to remember to go outside, spend some quiet time, and enjoy creation, but most importantly, make time every day to be still and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer. I can't hear him, I got that stuff off. I just want to hear him.